Uh, your career. <laughs> it's gone in a couple of very interesting career arcs. You begin as an indie for three albums, marketed to, I guess, the contemporary Christian crowd. Then you get a major label deal, do well, sell multi-platinum amounts of records. Then you're back to being an indie. And not only are you back to being an indie, you're doing records like I've never seen a band do records before. So you, you, let's, let's start with building your, let's start with why you're not on a major anymore. Well, I mean, I think that the, the current um, mindset is uh, major labels suck and they ruin music. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people jump on that bandwagon. I think, um, I think that ultimately major labels have put out some of my favorite records ever. Mm -hmm. um, I think ultimately it comes down to people. You know, companies are determined by people. And we, we felt like with Columbia, we had an incredible team around us that all got fired systematically just act. You know, that happens to a, a lot of bands, the, 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 the group within the label that championed them from the very beginning, yeah. that nurtures them through the system and is always there for them. All of a sudden, they get hacked, and then all of a sudden, their projects are in jeopardy. Yeah, and, and for us, I mean, music is such a communal expression, and it felt like the family w was no longer a family, and so we just pulled out and... How, um, how could you do that? Did you have a special contract? Or it's usually you're, you're tied in for like seven albums normally. Yeah, um, we were at the point where our next record, there were there, every, every record like, uh, yeah, I mean basically we were at a point where it was, it, was, it was a mutually agreed upon decision that they were okay with. And we, um, so we pulled out, we built our own studio in San Diego and just uh, recorded like 80 songs. And okay, I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> you recorded, essentially, five albums worth of material in one big, long session. What are you thinking? <laughs> I just wanted to fall in love with music again, you know, just kind of come back to the idea that we're a rock band doing what we love. And, and you know, we have such an incredible relationship with each other. Let's just dive into it. Let's let's start from the beginning. So, oh, sorry. It was the kind of thing where John's a prolific prolific writer. Like he just writes a lot. Well, a you lot gotta of songs. be. I mean, so every day it would be like, well, that was a cool song yesterday, but what about this song today? And so it was the constant, just like, yeah, let's try it. So we did record a lot of materials. And when you say five albums, I think they're like five totally different albums that we tried. Yeah. <clears throat> Where do the songs come from? I've talked to Eddie Vedder, and, and, and he says that, that sometimes you, the songs just don't come. And other days, they just flow. Um, 80 songs is a heck of a lot of music. Where did they come from? I think sometimes you're pulling for them. <clears throat> um, I always equate it with, with um, archaeology. Every day, you go in your backyard, or you go to Egypt, or wherever you go, you dig. And... Um, Sometimes you'll dig in the headlines. You can dig in, in, you know, relationships, wherever it is. You dig, and then some days you come up with just dirt or mud or crap or whatever. And other days you discover, like, this lost city that's somehow always been there and transcendent and, um, and comes through. And, and you feel like, wow, this was here all along. It's almost like you didn't write a song but you discovered a song mm -hmm. you know that was always there so 80 songs over how long so well over the course of the last couple years we pulled back put out um some solo eps side projects all this other stuff and then and th those sorry those are songs in addition to the 80 that we're talking about here yeah yeah jeez okay yeah. so continue and then um yeah, over the course of like About two years, two ahead. years, we just kind of chipped away, and I think the the discouraging thing was for us was realizing that most of it is stuff that no one's ever going to hear, you know, and and thinking like, okay, so we got eighty songs, and we like these songs, we you know we're passionate about every one of them, um, and we got to cut them all from the squad, you know, they're all going to get cut except for twelve, so um, I think that that was kind of a discouraging moment. The struggle with the album was figuring out what direction to go. I think it was a real process for us, too, of kind of finding out who we are at this time. You know, I mean, it was uh, 
what songs carry the heart of who we are right now. Okay, with Hello Hurricane, who are yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I, there's a, a quote I keep attributing to Dolly Parton, which could be wrong, <laughs> but <clears throat> let's just say it's Dolly for the sake of uh, the story. And um, she says, if you ain't crying, why are you singing it? And that, that kind of, for me, embodies the heart of this record, you know? If you feel deeply about this song, if it, if it touches you somewhere, and um, you want to sing it for the rest of your life, then let's put it on the record. If not, let's, let's move on. That's yeah. a pretty serious gut check for, for a piece of music. <clears throat> yeah, and, and we had so many songs that we were like, oh, this is fun to play, this is technically challenging, or whatever, and, and all that you know, kind of drifts away when you're playing the same song night after night, you know, if it moves you. And, and I think another thing that, that um, for me is, is interesting is when you have um, something happen in the world, like, like Haiti, for example, it changes the way you view music. You know, you listen to um, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot after 9-11, and suddenly you, you, the songs become something different. I think the same is true for us. Um, you know, I want a song that's going to be able to transcend the news and, and make sense in different circumstances. Well, let, let me ask you this then. We have Hello Hurricane, we have Vice Versus, ready to go later this year. Presumably, from what I've heard, two more records after that. Am I right? Is it possible to write too far in advance? Well, that's, that's the thing. I don't know how many of these songs are ever going to be heard because we've already replaced a lot of the songs on Vice Versus with new songs. So, you know, you're always writing. And I think songs have a, a shelf life, mm. you know, where it becomes stylistically, you know, lyrically irrelevant to who you are, you know, because you've changed a lot. It's like a you, yeah, yeah. you put them on a shelf for a while, leave them alone, come back to them, and then... Yeah decide whether or not they still work. Yeah, yeah. some songs are like, no, that yeah. that's still vital. Absolutely. Johnny Cash, you know, you you hear him today and it doesn't sound like he's dead. He's still alive in that song. Right. 